Hi gang, Scott here. This is the first video in what will be a short mini series about blending modes in On One, On One Photo Raw, or On One Effects. This feature of blending modes is in both products. And uh, what I'll talk about in this series is at a high level what blending modes are. I'm not gonna dive into some of the math and things that are going into it, because quite honestly, I don't find that useful. What I find useful is when do I want to use blending modes? Why would I use them? In what scenarios are they helpful? Because they are a little bit mysterious in so far as they can be sometimes challenging to predict what they'll do. And so I want to give you an understanding of what they are, when you might look to use them, and some recipes for uh, here's examples of how to use them effectively and then you can apply them in your photography as it makes sense. So if that sounds good to you, then this series will be good for you. And if you like this kind of content, hit the subscribe button. Let me know that these kind of series are useful to you. And if you're thinking about adding On One Photo Raw or On One Effects or any of the plugins to your toolkit, check the show notes. There's an offer code down there. It can save you some money. If you use one of my links, gives me a little bit of support. It doesn't cost you anything extra, and it helps support videos like this. Uh, so let's get into an overview of what blending modes are, where to find them, you know, how they generally work, and then subsequent videos we'll get into some of the recipes. So first up, what is a blending mode? In short, its simplest form, it changes the way that pixels from a filter or layer interact with the pixels that are beneath it. And I know that's a very dry, uninteresting definition, but that is what a blending mode does. And there are a variety of blending modes, different groups that either will darken or lighten or increase contrast or uh, you know, depending on the filter or layer you're working with change colors, mix things in interesting ways. And that's what blending modes are all about. You're you know, combining usually different layers to build up a final piece. Sometimes you're doing this with filters. And we'll, we'll get into the, all the, the, the details throughout the series on you know when to use them. But in its shortest form, a blending mode changes the way a filter or a layer interacts with what's beneath it in your filter or layer stack. So where do you find blending modes in on one products? They're they're in a lot of different places. So uh, so let's 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 turn to the computer here and look through to see where you can find them. There are a few places you can find the blending modes in on one software. I'm looking at on one photo raw. If you're working in effects, you will have just an effects tab, a local tab, and you will have layers. And blending modes are available in layers in the sum total filter stack as well as individual filters and local adjustments. So they are all over the place. You always find them in the gear menu. And so that's where you'll find the blending modes. Like on this local adjustment here, I hit the gear menu and here is your blending options mode. And there's this huge laundry list of them. We'll come back to that in a moment. That's where you find your blending modes. In the local adjustment, the gear tab. In the effects module, I'm looking at an individual filter. Once again, the gear tab. If I were to add another filter, let's just add the first one here. I have another gear menu. I have blending options. I can change them with the mode area. In effects, you can also change the entire filter stack. The entire filter stack has its own blending mode. And then finally, layers. If you're working in a layered workflow, each layer has a blending mode. So there are blending modes all over the place in On One. Tons of flexibility, which is both wonderful and daunting at the same time. Uh, let's break down what the different blending mode types are. And uh, I said this mini series will start to get into when and where you want to use these things where you might consider using them. Let's look at the one in layers here. Often we're using blending modes in layers. By default, everything's normal. And uh, yeah, that's, you've been using blending modes all along, even if you didn't know it. The second grouping here has all of the ones that tend to darken photos. These tend to lighten. And this group in the overlay area tends to do uh, you know, kind of a blended mix and will either uh, more aggressively or more selectively increase contrast some specialty ones for difference and exclusion. 
those are pixel based things and then a few that deal with hue saturation luminosity like i said at the top of this video i'm not going to go into all the different math that goes on behind these things that's really what's happening is it's looking at pixels and comparing those pixels to what's beneath it doing some math and deciding do i brighten that pixel do i add saturation do i change its color all that sort of stuff we can't keep that in our heads, right? At least I can't. So when I think about blending options and blending modes, I'm thinking about use cases. When would I do these things? When would I use them? One other place you'll find blending modes is inside certain filter controls themselves. For example, a glow filter. We'll add a little glow there. We have a mode and these are blending modes certain types of filters a photo filter for doing color tinting or a textures filter for adding textures the glow in this example they have these different modes and it changes the way the filter interacts with the photo and this is what blending modes do like here in a nutshell you're seeing that thing where the blending mode changes the way that the filter or the layer interacts with the rest of your photo. So when do you use these different blending modes? There, you know, there's you know a number of them, a couple of dozen almost. Uh, well, most of them are useful for texture blending, and that is probably by far most often when I will use blending modes in a layered workflow where I'm doing texture work. But there are other scenarios. Uh, cityscapes are good for the light and blending mode. I'm starting to you know, tell you about some of these videos that are going to come in the series. You want to do interesting color tinting. You might use something like exclusion. If you have to do manual alignment of layers, you might use the difference blending mode if for whatever reason the auto align stuff that's built in to on one isn't quite getting it right so there are other use cases for blending modes and that's what the rest of the series will go through but uh, to recap for for this video the blending mode is simply a way to change how a layer or a filter interacts with what's beneath it and that's done at the pixel layer and the changes depending on the mode may be an increase in contrast it may be to darken or lighten it may be to change the the tonality the saturation or the color of it so uh let's uh let's let's stop this one here uh, any questions go ahead and drop them below but we'll get into you know when you would use these and examples of using these blending modes in the rest of the videos in this series and until next time my name is scott Davenport. Have fun.